Hey family, welcome back to the Calibre Tools channel. Have you ever wondered how you turn sheet metal like this into something like this? Yeah, how does that happen? Well, it's accomplished by the use of a pan and box brake or sheet metal brake, if you ever heard of it, right? Stick with me and I'll show you how it works. <laughs> Okay, so we want to cover a door frame, okay, that's sticking out here because of all the exposed wood and everything. We don't want to look at that. We want to cover it with something and we're going to cover it with metal because we're retrofitting this whole area with metal in this trailer here. So here's a prototype that was made to do that, okay, just to see how it would look first. And that's how it would look, right? Now, how did we get the metal to do that, to bend in all those areas and corners just to cover that, you know, that exposed section of the door frame. Well, we used a sheet metal bender, okay? And it allowed us to create the bends in this metal prototype to allow us to cover that area, okay? Now, I'm holding it with my hand because it's composed of two pieces and if I let my thumb go, that piece right here will fall down. Okay, because it's not all the way to the ground. It's just a prototype. See, it stops right there. That one stops right there. Now, if you notice this edge here, it's not a sharp edge. Yeah, it's kind of falling down. Matter of fact, I'll, there you go. <laughs> I'll just take this piece off. Um, if you notice that, there are two edges here. One looks like a sharp edge, which is where my thumb is. And then where that finger is, that's another edge, but it's not as sharp. That's what's called a hem. Basically, you hemmed the metal, just like you hem your pant leg or you know your clothes, you know, you fold it up. We can do that with the sheet metal bender as well. When I created the hem for this edge, what happened is it pushed out this edge further than I wanted it to. See, it's sticking over the edge. So anytime you bend or use a hem in your metal, like that, you have to account for this distance that the hem creates, right? Because it may push your metal out further than you want it to, or make the metal longer than you want it to, okay? So whatever the dimensions of that hem is, you have to subtract that from your measurements so you won't be sticking out on your ends, all right? Just a tip. So we wanted to cover all the sharp edges on the door frame. So as you see here, you have a metal flap sticking down here. So we bent that. First it stuck out and then we took it to the bender and pressed it down at a 90 degree angle, right? And then we have this side piece here. We didn't want this stuff going on here where there's just this edge and this edge and nothing here. So we cut our side piece like that. So when we put it on, it can slide right under that flap and meet this other edge so some continuity could happen there, right? So there's no more open gap, just this line here. You can, you know, tack well that and maybe grind away that line or just leave it as is, right? So that's what we're working on. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is get our measurements. We wanna measure from the bottom of the frame, that, uh, that floor there, the wooden part, not the metal part, all the way up to the top of this metal door frame and we get about what? We get about 45 and, and uh, 13 sixteenths, uh, let's say 45 and 7 eighths, okay, inches to the top of that frame. But you gotta do both sides to make sure. And on this side, what do we get? But if you look at the plywood in the back, it's a little higher, right? So we can measure off the plywood or just bring our measurement up to around 46 inches. So we're gonna do that. Then across the top, we got about two and a quarter inches all the way to the edge, the front edge of the frame, the door frame. But because of that hem that we spoke of earlier and how it uh, adds distance to your measurements when you create the hem, we're gonna walk that back to about two and an eighth. And when we create the hem, uh, it's gonna push it back out, hopefully not over the edge of the door frame. And we're gonna go up about two inches above the door frame and hem it back to around one and a quarter inches, okay? 
and that's where the hem comes from and we're gonna have that on the top and what would be the sides of the door frame as well. So essentially the width of our metal when we cut it will be four and one eighths. Okay, you have uh, the two and an eighths that we measured here for the top part plus the two inches that we're gonna extend above it. But we're also gonna create that hem at one and a quarter inches. So after it's said and done, what do you have? You have two and an eighth here and what will be one and a quarter. So you add those two together, two and an eighth plus one and a quarter. There are some fractions lessons for you. That's gonna be the distance from here to here to here after we create the hem. But we're gonna start off with a two and an eighth plus two inches, which will be four and an eighth. That's what we cut our metal at, four and one eighths. Okay, so the total height of what we need is 46 inches plus the two inches on the top. That's exactly four feet. And guess what? We happen to have some 20 gauge metal in the shop that's exactly four feet long, okay? Four feet high, four feet tall, whatever you wanna call it. So all we have to do is cut four and one eighth inches in, okay? And we need three strips two for the sides and one for the top. So let's go ahead and start marking out our lines on the metal so we can bend the metal and cut the metal. So in order to draw the lines, I'm gonna use this metal scribe right here. See, it's like a pencil, but it's made of metal with a really sharp point and you can scribe in the metal like that and it makes a very visible line. And it's also more precise than a marker or a pencil line, which is too thick. So when you put it on the metal bender, which is this right here, you have some precise lines to put under the fingers, which are these right here on the bender. Also called a pan and box brake or metal brake, different names for it. Now, when you're using a cutoff wheel like that on sheet metal, um, it's gonna leave a jagged edge. So you gotta get that off of there. It's dangerous to touch that and it's just unsightly. So we're gonna take a grinder and grind it down. These are the two side pieces.
okay, these lines here, this one and this one, is where we're gonna bend the metal, okay? We're gonna create a hem here and a 90 here on this one. But first, we have to cut this shape out. Okay, the first bend that we're gonna make on the pan and box break is right here on this line here. That's gonna be the first hem that we make, okay? But in order to do that, we have to flip it over and do it on this side, okay? So we have to measure up uh, one and a quarter inches from this line one and a quarter inches from the corner here, all right? Okay, so I made a mark here on this side and a mark here on this side, okay? Once again, I had to flip it over because if I don't do that, then the bend will come out wrong. So you always have to think through your bends before you make them because if you make the wrong bend, well, you just don't wanna do that. Okay, so on the pan and box break, you have these two arms here, these two levers. And what these levers do is they lift up these right here. These are the fingers, right? They're called fingers. And when you lift the arms, as you can tell, the fingers raise. Okay, I'm gonna lift both arms up even though I've bent metal just using one arm, like on one side and using this section. But I'm gonna lift both arms up just to show you. All the fingers are up, look at that. So the next thing I want to do is find the reference point, the mark on my metal, and I want to place that mark on this line here. And I want to place the other mark on the same line. In fact, let's slide it down a little bit. That's the line. That's the reference mark. And I want to lower my arms. I want to bring them back over. Got to be careful, this thing can flip back on you. And you don't want to get hit by that. So you lower the finger onto your line. Now that you have your fingers down, you want to lock the arms in. Then you wanna grab this bar here and raise it up and bend your metal. We're gonna create a hem with this one, so we're gonna go all the way. So we've bent it as much as we could. Now we have to complete the bend to create the hem. So you place it back on the brake, lift up the fingers, place it under there like that place it under there like that and lower your fingers there's your hem Now we have to create a 90. This portion is gonna flip up to 90 degrees right here on this line here, okay? So we're gonna place the metal in the brake with the hem in first and place this line on our reference line. We're gonna place the hem, this part of the hem face down so we can make our 
90 degree cut, right? Because remember, the hem is going to be facing the wall. The uh, This part of the hem is going to be facing the wall. So this is going to be the horizontal part coming out. This is going to be the vertical part, okay, over the door frame. So we have to place it in this way. And when we lift the brake up that way, it's going to bend it this way at a 90. You don't want to overbend, but sometimes you may have to just a little bit, depending on the how the metal is reacting to you. But you don't want to overbend. You can correct an overbend just by tapping it out. So sometimes it's a touch and go process. That's our 90 there. Raise our fingers to take our metal out. Well, looks like a decent 90. If you want to straighten it out, you can put it back in like I got it in right now, and you can just tap it. Tap it a little bit if your angle is not exactly where you want it. You can just put it back in the brake and bend it. You can take a soft mallet or you, just your hand, tap it, pull it a little bit until you get what you need, until you're satisfied. By the way, this stuff is sharp. It'll cut your fingers open. Wear gloves if possible when handling this really thin sheet metal or any sheet metal really. But this is 20 gauge. Don't ask me how I know. Okay guys, remember this section here, this stick out has to bend down 90 degrees. That stick out has to bend down 90 degrees. Okay, so this is how that's done on the bender. You see this space right there? You're gonna use that to make that 90 degree bend. So you take your metal, put it like that, okay? Put it here, line up your corner to where you want to bend it. There's your 90. Now we're gonna use this side of the brake to make this 90 on this side of the metal. There you go. Huh. Not too bad. That's a nice 90. Now it's time to scribe the side panels that's going to go on the side of the door frame.
All right, there it is, guys. The door is now framed with metal. That's what a pan and box brake can do. It's not even fastened to the wall yet or the door frame, but just to show you how a pan and box brake can help you bend metal for what you need to do. I know it was a long video, but I had to do a lot of prep to show you an actual practical application of a sheet metal brake, okay? So hopefully you stuck through the video. And if you didn't, and you fast forwarded to the pan and box brake part, hey, I understand. It's a pretty fun tool to use. Hey, if you appreciated the video, hit the like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys next time.